eyes and so did I do. Um, she shot through to what I know as the fourth dimension, which is the fourth octave and the fourth dimension, which is halfway up it. Talked to her uncles and granddads and so forth, and then she got the words, you have to go back and look after your son. While she was away, I died, and instead of going to the fourth dimension, I went up into the fifth. And I spoke to what I know as the Golden Ones. And I call them the gang now. And what happens is that when she came down, back to incarnate in, she sucked me back in. So what that did was, that opened up a portal of communication to the higher realms, the, the Concordias, the, the soul reality, the fifth dimension, however you want to call it. But it opened that up. Uh, as a wee boy, uh, I can remember, like I'm brought up in, uh, born in Gisborne, brought up in Wairau. Anyone knows Wairau? The Perry Hotel was my home for my first 16 years. That was the Cowboys and Indians roughhouse hotel in its day. It was fantastic. But I would go down to the river and one of these golden beans would turn up and start talking to me. Or I'd be walking to school. And next minute, plain as day in my imagination, there'd be uh, an Asian woman or a, a, a Tibetan male or a, a male in a turban or and I, all belief systems are Europeans and I got to know them really, really well. And they never ever told me what was right or wrong, they only ever expanded on my perception. So I'm down the river with my Shanghai shooting water, water rats as young boys used to do, and they'd come along and go, and they would talk to me about how that would work and how that would work. So I, that was my younger days. I could see Kerala, uh, um, ghosts and spirits, and I knew the difference between the gold ones and the etherics that I could see. Uh, I grew up, um, oh, I, I knew that mum died because she came back, that's why I could tell you that she died, because she used to... Mum used to have her own crystal ball and she had her own Ouija board, which I used to have a muck around with. I was running seances when I was eight, uh, when I was eight years old, running my own seances. <laughs> uh, anyway, and then of course teenagehood got to me in, at Whitehall, so you know we're talking about girls, rugby and beer and whatever else. So this kind of got pushed to the side. Um, I still had communication with them, and, you know, the, on the odd occasion, the first night I had was uh, to try and get drunk and have an all-nighter at, at Mahia Peninsula, if anyone knows Mahia, mm -hmm. with a, two or three of my mates, and here we are trying to sit down and drink warm beer, trying to stay up all night, <laughs> and I think we were in the third form or something like that, and they said, oh, well, let's have a game. What would you like to be when you grow up? And one of the boys said, I'd like to be a playboy photographer. Which got all our rousing applause because we thought that was pretty good. Someone else wanted to um, be a, a racing car driver, which we could understand. And that got round to my, my turn and I said I wanted the wisdom of the universe. <laughs> and I don't know where the fuck that came from. <laughs> they didn't know what that meant. I didn't know what that meant. And that kind of blew the backside out of the party because it was like, <laughs> we don't understand that. <laughs> so I had glimpse of, glimpses of it, okay, um, got married, uh, lived in Palmerston North, Chipperton, Masterton, Carverton, Greytown, and around about when I was 30, 29, 30, uh, I used to run work schemes, so we had the partner up and this guy said, oh, I used to be known as Dava. Dava, what are you doing? Oh, I don't know, I'll do some bloody thing, Sam. You ever been in a meditation? No. Well, you teach me meditation, I'll teach you something, because that was what it was all about. So he said, sit and look at the wall, have a look at that dot there, when you're ready, close your eyes. I said, oh, yeah, I can do that. 45 minutes later, I came back and everyone was around me. They would have a thought, I'd see this. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, I didn't know what had happened. I didn't know what had happened. Something had flicked the switch and I just said, 
They said we want to go also our alternative. I perceive organics as the original rather than the other way around. So um, anyway, uh, I started searching, and I'm a deep end man, so I'm I'm into it. I'm giving it a stink. My wife couldn't handle it. She'd rather me be Christian because she knew how what to expect to a degree. And uh, we went to Fakatani, Mahopi Beach. I gave up everything for five years. I'd walk along the beach with these spirits go, we need a hand. I'd go, go away. Go away. I'm going to go sit on a rock and catch a snapper. Butter off. <laughs> I did that for five years and in the end I thought I can't do this any longer. So um, I was saving my marriage at the time. And uh, I sat down one night. Neighbours was on. Um, 911. Remember 911? Mm. Okay, well my... I was running a pie cart by, by this stage. I'd start work at half past ten at night and go through half past three in the morning, um, feeding uh, everyone in Fakatani in the late house. And uh, the two girls were sitting over there watching uh, Jason and Kylie Minogue and neighbours. And I got a tickle in my throat. I was eating stir fries. And I thought, oh shit, <coughs> I thought, oh, damn it. <coughs> and I stood up and I walked to the bench and I was. <coughs> And I couldn't get in the air. One minute I'm alive, next minute I'm friggin' dying. And I was at the bench, I could see my nine year old daughter seeing her old man die. Because every time I breathed out, it was, it was a valve. <laughs> and um, so then I'd, go, I'd give it up, I'd give it up. I, I could feel it here, but that's as far as I could go. And I thought, well, should have this is dying, and I'm going to die. Then I felt these arms come around here, and I was I was drifting, I was drifting, and <laughs> like a big guy, like I'm running a pie cart, chips at my, you know, so I'm looking at 19 stone, big lad. Katie gave me three, and I was way out there, and I said to Katie, give it one more. Hello. Oh. Sure. Take a seat. Anywhere. Yep. Anywhere. Hello, everybody. So anyway, I was. I'd left the body at this stage. I hadn't seen. I tell you now, I hadn't seen the great white light or anything. I just knew uh, my my knees had buckled. Next one, I'm up there, and she gave me one more turn. It was. Out came this piece of celery. <sighs> Next minute I'm, I'm alive again. Wow, what a friggin' wake up call that was. Now, to the ego, it wasn't that good. <coughs> Choking on celery, I'd rather choke on a pork bone or something like that. You know, something meaty. <laughs> that didn't happen. It was celery. So next minute I'm, I'm alive again. And my wife walked in, called her an hour later, and she said, what's wrong? They said, Dad just died. <laughs> So I got the kind of home treatment. And then I started walking along Coastlands Beach, if you know Fakatani, Coastlands Beach. And my wife would say, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to go and breathe. She said, oh, well, I think you're blowing this out of proportion. I said, you don't know what it's like until you don't have it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So I was walking along that beach and I would, I'd take the cootie for a walk. And, uh, and I started breathing. And within six months, that was kind of the hint, that was the hint, to go, okay mate, you've got this happening and you've got this happening, what side of the fence are you going to be on? I know you enjoy a style like it, and I know you enjoy this and that and like that, but you've got this whole reality over here. So I'd look, by that stage I'd left my, my, I'd left my wife after six months, and my two beautiful daughters, and uh, didn't take long before, well it did take a wee while, I got the toxin of a white-tailed spider in my back, over my heart chakra, and it rotted a hole in my in my back. I've still got the scars from it. I was with a partner at the time, and she was a theatre nurse, and she said, for heaven's sake, don't go to the hospital, because I use you as guinea pig. So I thought, shit, what am I going to do? And I called it my pizza, because it, it was about that big, and it was rotting around my spinal cord. 
And in those days, white tails fly, like, I've seen on TV people talk to God or God talk to them. I just had this fantastic stereo go off in my head, heal this from the inside out. And the first thing I said, excuse the language, fucking great, now I'm hallucinating. I'm human, okay? I'm Kiwi, I'm human, I get excited, I swear, I'm probably a bit of a Billy Collin of the spiritual world. But I thought I was hallucinating, so then I said to my wife, what do you think this is? And of course, no one, no one freaking knew. So I finished my share and I sat down in the bed and I was thinking, what the hell does he all this from the inside out mean? I didn't know. I, I didn't know. Like, I thought differently, but I didn't know that. So to come on the story short, I've got a hole in my back the size of a piece of pizza. Uh, I'm in incredible pain. I'm crying on the corner of the building, uh, of the room. And, um, and then I go, I wonder what I have to heal from the inside of myself to fix the outside of myself. Right, that's, that's the big question. Because, you know, we've all heard, go within, go within. It's like, yeah, well, where the friggin' heck do I friggin' go within? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, where the hell do I go? No right so and so's told us that. It's very vague. Uh -huh. So uh, then I, I had a drink, one way I had a drink, and I was in the cot. I had the, you know, the wooden bars. Mum's there, Dad walks in, he's drunk. Mum gets up, downloads on Dad, you can't bloody do that, we've got a la la la. I took the whole lot on. I thought, shit. So I woke up, I was in a bit of a mess, I thought, holy hell, I found the pattern that can, that can go. Mm. Great, found it. Uh, it got worse. I thought, shit. What do I do now? So one of the golden ones turned up. Amoya was, if anyone knows Amoya. And he goes, um, he knows what, how I think. He said, uh, just, because, just because you find cat shit on the carpet doesn't mean it disappears. <laughs> and I go, no. He said, <laughs> and I said, no, that'd be right. And he goes, well, you have to find a process to get rid of the cat shit. So I go, and it disappears because I can't give you answers. That's the rules. Yeah, and uh, because we're gods and goddesses, all you females are goddesses, all us males, we're gods. We have to live to the, we have to aspire to be a god or a goddess. That's it. You know? We are mere mortals on the outside. So anyway, then I had to find out a bloody process <laughs> to get this bloody pattern. <laughs> Meanwhile, dealing with a friggin' big hole in my back. So I talked to my my partner, I said, I, said, I don't know what I'm, what I, and my, the end uh, thing was for me was uh, light. Must be light. There's nothing else. I can't think of anything else. You know, a pill ain't going to do it. I was writing, I tried Romola, I tried Bark Flare, I tried da 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 da. Something was creating this from a world that I never knew of. Okay? And then I tried the, the, of the, the alternative modern medicine, nothing touched it. So what I did was, I never had these things. I, I, I sat down and made this, shut up, thank you. I had lemons, rooms, crystals, I don't give a shit what it was. I said, right, here's me, let's say here's me as a baby, in the cot, right, here's mum, here's dad, he walks in, and I just role play, you know, I just role play. I don't know what to do. No one's shown me what to do. Okay, so, so I go, what the, what the hell do I do here? So, I got me, I said, right, well, I'll already walk in on this. I'll better talk to you, seeing you and me. So I went and had to talk to him, how are you feeling? Shitty. Guilty. Burden. What am I here? It's like, all that. Hang on, hey, you know, I, I had a pretty good life. Like, compared to some people, my life is pretty good. But the point is, it doesn't matter. We're here to have stuff happen. And he was feeling stink, he felt sorry for mum, he felt sorry for dad, and he took it all on. So what I did, 
And I thought, okay, I talked to him, talked to her, came and got his side of it. My brother and sister, they went in this. So I got a, a torch, normally I have a torch. And I just got a bloody torch and say, okay, are you okay? Can you handle this? And I lifted it up into the light using a torch. Right? Take mentally, physically, emotionally, you can't make Cheers. 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 Thanks, Mum. Dad. Cup of ice. Sweet. And that's kind of what I did. And uh, like this, I'm talking, a, a rotten hole in your back is really, really sore. Like very, very painful. Probably the top third calmed down and all the inflammation went. All, all redness. Uh, you know, the F word is really big, like it's far out. So, I, yeah, I did. I pulled my eyes out because it was like shit. What do I do now? So, what I did was, I, I would sit there and I, I did a grid over it. And when I had it, I felt, it felt like, oop, wonder what that is. Give me a picture of it, please. I'd get a picture of me as a boy. Uh, so, I'd get out the torch. Right there, what do we got? I was healed in two weeks. Yeah, heal in two weeks, right? Using my torch <laughs> and my blink and roll play, which is basically using my light. Because mm -hmm. I said, you know, this is coming from the inside of you, this is on the outside. I'm only playing it out on the outside, but you can do it on the inside. So, um, I, I, was, I was fine. I was, I was getting ready to go back out on the streets. Went for a walk down the road. A uh, friend was Hapu, she was overdue. She said, far out, yes sir, they're going to induce them. I go, oh, you know, to a male. It's like, mm, okay. But, you know, she was crying, and I said, well, perhaps we can have a look at it. I've just been doing this clearing thing with the bloody torch. And we'll see what we could do. So we went back into her childhood. She'd had three children, and they were all, uh, they weren't train crash, but they were really, they weren't, they weren't nice. There was a lot of fallout with her births. So we went and found out in her childhood where it happened. Walked in, did the usual thing. I said, you got a torch or some bloody thing? She had a massive dolphin thing. So, <laughs> da, 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 did this, did this, did this. And um, I got a phone call. Half past 10 that night. Oh, it's Andrea here. I said, oh, what are you doing? She said, I'm on the um, delivery table. I've just had the perfect birth. Nikolai is born. And I just want to tell you, thank you. So, I put the phone down, like I still sort of I put the phone down and I go, wow, what the hell, what the hell have I found? And that's how I'm, I'm here. That was 25 years ago. I've never given it up. And I have found some really amazing shit. <laughs> it all relates to us as human beings. All right? It relates to us as human beings, how we work, what the hell goes on, how does this happen, why does that happen, that flicks, why does that happen like that. Go within, I'll tell you where the hell you go within, tonight. Because we're humans, right? And we can do this. We can do this. I'm, I'm still doing it, all right? I can't walk through a wall yet. So, you know, but the point is, I'll, I'll go through the basics with you, give you a good cut it all. I get really excited sometimes, so you'll handle that. <laughs> so, you okay? You okay with it? Yeah. Right, so basically, I'm going to show you where you go or how it works, how we work. Okay, we're just like a biochemical computer. We're all walking around looking at this, whatever this is. But we've got this whole friggin' world going on underneath and no one knows diddly squat about it or how it works. And I'm going to start talking in a minute, well, talking about how it works and you're going to go off. <laughs> so if anyone has any questions, you blink and ask, alright? When you were doing that, huh? did you go back into past lives? Yeah. You did? I do now. You do didn't because then, didn't then. a lot of that <coughs> comes from past lives that we bring forward. Yeah, and I'll explain that. I'll explain how they come yeah. forward. <coughs> right. here's, the, here's our different layers, okay? 
while you're working in the third dimension, you are only aware of your outside layer. That's your third dimension. And third dimension is basic, you know, height, width, breadth. That's all 3D means. Doesn't mean anything else. If I do something up on the board back there, it's two dimensional. It's height and width. That's all that means. So there's nothing fancy with that. This is our best suit. Alright. And of course, when we pass through, this is dealt to accordingly. This is your outside of your um, spirit, your ghost, kehua. Okay. Now, <coughs> this is, of course, the overcoat on with this. Now, which is which is pretty, you know, that, that, that's pretty standard. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of a twist. If you go and visit the Fano or friends or the boss or something, and if this feels bruised, this has to bruise itself to match that. Mm -hmm. So if I'm talking here and I'm rude to Billy, and I bruise her inner ghost, yeah, she goes, ooh, that bloody hurt. She's going to get up, and this part of her has to do something to bruise itself to match this. It's such a good overcoat. Right? If, if there's cutting remarks and I'm cutting and I, and I cut someone with a remark, so whoever it is, they'll walk over there, break something and cut their finger, go out there, cut their finger on something freaking bizarre. But the point <laughs> is, if this feels cut, you have to cut yourself. That's the rule. It's so nothing to do with on the outside. It'll manifest. It'll manifest. It'll manifest. Yeah. The yeah. Uh, and you will only cut where this feels bruised or uh, needs cutting. So our wildway, our legs carry all our transition programs. Like you know, if I want to go from here to there, I use my my legs. So all my programming is on how to move and how to get there are in my legs and in your legs. So if if I'm rude and I tell you something about or that's a dumb direction you're doing. Direction is knees. And this goes, oh shit, I thought it was on the right. Mm -mm. This one, the outside layer has to hurt its knee to fit this because knees are direction. Or if I shock you, like if I walk around with no knees, it's like, oh, but mm -mm -mm -mm. they are also shock absorbers. So a lot of people who have bad knees, they, um, they have a lot of shock in their life because their knees are always taking the shock. Do you understand? You get that? Mm -hmm. So therefore it's got to attack the knees. It can't attack the elbow, mm -hmm. something else in the elbow, something else in your neck, and there's something else in your big toe. So depending on where you get hurt, you can decode what the hell your programming is. And you're, you're a map, like you're, you're a map. And you're, I, I could do two hours just on body decoding. Because when you know how this works, you go, shit, oh, you've got a puckadoo ankle there. Yeah, yeah. Mm, how do you go with security? Because your ankles are your piles for your whare or your house. They, they put you onto the whenua. Mm, okay. Uh, are you left-handed? No, I'm right-handed. Okay, so your right-hand side is masculine because you use that. That's your dominant side. So your left-hand side is feminine. And you are weak on your feminine ankle, so you're a bit weak in your femininity. Ankle. Clean as, clean as a wink. Uh, shoes. Feet. You use your legs to get to where you are and to fit into the reality. Your feet fit you into it. And so therefore, if you... Here we go. First... Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> right, here we go. Orb. Dun, 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 dun. Some people call this a diversion. This is cool. Right, here's your dad. Here's your old man. Here's your mother. Bless her heart. You come down 40 days before conception from spirit land up here in the fourth, dimension, fourth octave. Every time you come down, by the time you get here, you've freaking forgotten all about this because it's up there. Mm. Okay? You get down, what's it doing? Ankles. Mm. Three days before conception. This is my perception of it, right? Yeah. Mm. Okay? This is my perception. And you go, oh. 
right, this is my next mission. I wonder what the, what's going on here. Uh, Mum and Dad don't even know each other. Oh shit. And they don't even, and <laughs> she's going to get happy with me. Shock. Knees. Okay. You come down here. Oh, they got their heart set on a boy. Bastard, I'm going to be a girl. <laughs> wrong. <laughs> wrong will go to your throat every time. So if you've got guilt or feel wrong about anything or betrayed, <coughs> straight to your throat. Oh. Shit. So what happens? So what happens is that it bloody starts here. You're not even on the planet in the physical reality yet. Mm. You're already emoting and having emotions because here's spirit land, right? Fourth and fifth doctor of the fourth dimension. Yeah, we have. I'm. I've just shot off on a fantastic tangent. This is meant to be three quarters through the corridor. <laughs> now. Every time we have a lifetime, this records it, right? Records the whole bloody thing. Swipe a time capsule, okay? Kokomotsu, die, up to spirit man, you incarnation, Inuit, cold, okay? Passover, <laughs> okay? Friggin' Middle East, whatever, die, and next minute, whatever lifetime this is, okay? And it goes, right, well, uh, I never had a male in this lifetime. Okay. Uh, I lived alone with my mum. Oh, okay. Sweet, so we get a mum. Right, and she dies and I die. Okay. Now, what happens with this lifetime is it's all been recorded. So, what happens here is that it goes up to spirit land and it goes, right, oh, I need to incarnate in. A certain amount of the jigsaw puzzles have to fit. Into this, into this incarnation, otherwise you can't incarnate. You know, it's like, hey, I've got all my baggage here, I've got a, you know, in the boot, <laughs> it needs to fit here. Oh, okay, right, I need you to go. Oh, yeah, so they have a big buster, he buggers off. She's born without a dad, which is perfect because she never had a dad here. Yeah, that fits it in. Fits. Yeah. Yeah. Fits. Um, she's coming in here, let's say, um, oh gosh, so we go. Live by the beach, uh, let's say a fishing village, alright. Next one here, oh, I think we might shift. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll go shift some, we'll go to Makatu, eh? Huh? Right. That'll happen. You watch it. Now, all this stuff is theory. You watch your grandchildren, you know your grandchildren, you know your children. I'm going to go through right through this, and you are going to start going. Oh, uh, uh. Okay, do you understand that? Now, um, oh, fishing. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm really craving mussels at the moment. Mussels, really? You never eat mussels? Yeah, I know, but I just need mussels <laughs> because this part of the jigsaw puzzle has to fit, and that's why parents have cravings. I had a client the other day, she was six months gone, we, we were having, I was helping her do some clearings and um, she and I said, so how, how, how long have you, you got to go? And she said, oh, you know, six months, I've been six months. Any cravings? Yes, kebabs. Really bad. I go, oh, kebabs. Yeah. And so, of course, I look for a culture for a lifetime, and kebabs to me, being a Kiwi, is Turkish. So I go, mm, okay, so I shut up, I don't say anything, and I go, anything else? She said, yeah, I dance. Yeah, what kind of dancing? In the kitchen. So is it a jiggly dance? She said, yeah, I jiggle. I jiggle like this all the time. <laughs> Wouldn't happen to be a belly dance by any chance? <laughs> she said, yeah. I've even thought about getting a bell, you know, one of those bell things? <laughs> and I said, uh, uh, you're having a Turkish child. She goes, you wouldn't fucking believe what a remarkable thing you just said. She said, that makes so much sense. And what I do is right in front of your, all I do is read the physical. This, that's all I do. And from that, 
I find out what's in here. Okay? So what so what happens here is that we, this blessed white thing, which is your subconscious ego, which lives in the astral reality, this records everything, and you are the sum total of every friggin' thing you've ever been. Mm -hmm. Talking to a lady like I'm going to a, uh, a wedding tomorrow, I was talking to a woman yes yesterday, New Zealand Māori, come over for the wedding, lives in Australia, cooks African food. So I go, so you're a New Zealand Māori living in Australia, living in an African past life? Yeah. I said, yeah. And that's how it works. You may be in Australia, you might be a Māori, you might be a Pākehā, or whatever it is, but what actually happens is that this is a whole nother world, man. This is trippy shit. <laughs> it is trippy because uh, I, I moved to Mamaku from Rotorua two days. I was in an Irish lifestyle because it's green and it's wet and it's cold. And then this thing here goes, oh, all right, yes, sir. You've gone back to Ireland. So within two days, uh, someone would give me an Irish drum. Someone would give me a Irish cup of tea. Uh, and I was like, what the heck is going on? And I, that's how quick it is. That's how quick these lifetimes happen. If you walk into that kitchen and you're the cook, your subconscious will go, hmm, I have to cook for all these people. I wonder what lifetime I used to cook. And it'll find it. And next thing you go to Tanya, I think we'll do Thai tonight. And you go, Thai? Yeah, I feel Thai coming on. You know? Because that person's in a Thai lifetime. All of a sudden, if you decide, oh, this might be a bit, I guess, you decide to be a lover, your son will go, lover, okay, it'll go through your lifetimes, oh, here, and let's say French, here you go, pull out a French lifetime, and it'll come and sit on your shoulder. Many, go, many guides are lifetimes, uh, life, yeah, lifetimes, incarnations. Many of them are, not all of them, but many of them are, and they'll come and sit on your shoulder and you become a French lover. Uh, or you might want to go, normal, very normal one is if you want to become spiritual or on to it or however it is, this thing here will go, oh shit, okay, and we'll go through and go, oh yeah, you had a really good connection, like that, there's a Māori, so this person will take out um, Māori tanga and all that stuff. Or, you know, this might be Native American, so next minute, up on the wall goes Walter and Tonkin, Tonkin and bloody dream catches and goes on the because that's the lifetime that's got the records for you to be spiritual. Okay, it's all in there. Uh, right. So you just pick the line. This does. It just picks whatever. It picks it, mate. Yeah. And it fits the outside reality. This. This works off five senses. No. You know, no. Hearing, touching, blah, blah, blah. This works off 12. This thing here's got more eyeballs than I, you and I put together. Okay? So, so for instance, if, are you saying, so let's say tonight I feel like eating Indian, um, so there I'm, therefore I'm bringing in an Indian karmic aspect to my life, but what about tomorrow night I might feel like eating raw fish? Yeah, so what, you, what you will know, happen is they'll, come, not, yeah. they'll come in clusters. They'll come in clusters. Like, you know, I'd move the Mamaku and I think, far out, here's an Irish drum. And they go, okay, that's interesting. And then next one, there's an Irish teapot. Okay, the Irish teapot. And I'm, I'm a uh, critical mentor of youth. So I get this Asperger lad who's crazy on the Irish Rovers. <laughs> so I spend all day listening to the friggin' Irish Rovers. <laughs> I go, what the fuck is going on? So you look for clusters and you'll get new friends and they'll be Irish. I had clients, I had uh, nine clients, every single one of them, we had to, they were Irish. I even manifested an Aussie one with an Aussie accent, born in Belfast. It's <laughs> going far out, this is getting... <laughs> so you look for clusters, you look for clothing. Uh, when you go home, I can tell you now, you go home and have a look for your thing. 
you, know, you just have a look at your ornaments, pictures up on the wall, because your mind will, will have your lifetime all over the place. So, you, so through one life, you can have many clusters? Yeah. yeah. From what I understand, we have 540 lifetimes per epoch. An epoch mm -hmm. is, uh, is approximately 26,000 years. We've been on here for five epochs. We're in our Aquarian epoch. And for what it's worth, uh, oh, the bigger one, bigger one, please. Okay. The Earth is going around the Sun, all right? Uh, 365 days. Now this sun goes round another sun. This one. That's called El Shalom. And that is in, depending on uh, what ethnicity you are, that is Pleiadian or Matariki. Our central sun is in Matariki. <laughs> and we go around here there, uh, yeah, 26,000 years, and that's known as the Day of God. Alright? And uh, a couple of years ago, 23rd or something, you know, everyone, the mind, the end of the world was going to happen. All, all that was, was that was the an end of that epoch and the beginning of a new one. So it was a biggie. It was a massive thing. But it wasn't enough to blow up the earth or whatever. Okay? So that's the end and the beginning of an epoch. That's where my <coughs> name comes from. My name's come from El So... <laughs> And it can be a bit tricky because, you know, I work for the Ministry of Ed and they go, Oh, where does Yasumaki come from? They all think it's Japanese. And they go, El Siwon. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> because the rules are, I have to ask the, I have to ask, ask the questions. That's it. That's when you get to the fifth dimension or someone says something that's polite to answer the question. Yeah. And I just say, El Siwon. And then if another question comes after that, I, I tell them brief, brief, basically where they come from. Now, <coughs> right. Outside layer, outside your, your ghost layer, outside layer of your ghost, your etheric layer, uh, which is anchored to your base chakra. Okay? Inside of that, we have uh, an emotional body. It's red, all right? It's feminine. Uh, it's a coil of energy. You know, the caduceus, the snake that goes up the pole. The red, the red snakes, the feminine, our feminine body. The blue snake is our masculine body. Uh, whenever you meet someone, and it's a female, and you have a relationship with them, either at work, sister, brother, sister, mother, grandma, so here's, here's grandma. This person here is a reflection of a female that you were in here. Okay, so let's say you go to work and you've got a, a tricky boss. It's a female. Yeah. Where does this girl woman come from? And then you go back to Facebook and you are manifesting your reflection and you go, I don't get that, I don't get it, I don't get it. Like, I'm not like this woman here. She is nasty. <laughs> so then you look for a theme or a past life on her. She might be English. She might be Aussie. She might be something. She may be an Aussie but doing a really good imitation of a South African. That is your hint on what lifetime you were like with her. And it's stuck in here. And if she's pissing you off, you can go in there and take that out. And she will either change or disappear or you will disappear because no longer will you have to project this being in your hologram. Do you understand that? Did you understand that? I'll give you another one. I'll give you another one. I'm at Marmacure, right? I used to enjoy a cigar in a, in a, in a, uh, in a Steiny in the old room. Here. So I'm out here on the deck by myself, over the over here, oh, brassing me off. Marmacure's meant to be quiet and you're making a noise. <laughs> so, and then 
sure enough, one of the gold ones comes in and says, hey, you have a bloody clearer. You clear this thing. And I go, oh, yeah. So I couldn't find a little dog, because I never had a little dog. I had a snappy child across black lead. Didn't fit the matrix. So then it's like, well, take the dog out of yourself. Take the dog out of myself. <laughs> Shit, I just wanted to have a cigar and drink a beer. <laughs> so this thing's a pain in the ass, it's yapping. And I thought, well, when I was a boy, you know, I cried and I was a pain in the neck and blah, blah, blah. So I went into there, which is in my blue masculine body, had a talk to him. Mate, do you really need to make all this bloody racket? You know, this is very ho you know. So having a yak there. And I cleared I cleared the attachment to that, right? Come on, right, cheers, mate. Are you talking to you? I'm talking to me. Yeah. You get really used to talking to you. So next one is like gone. Okay, sweet. Uh, oh the dog. Toddled off and I thought, oh, okay, peace and quiet at last. And I thought that was interesting. So the next week I drive into my drive, well, down the road, and there's a, a truck here, moving truck. And I go, What are you two doing? Oh, we're shifting. Are you shifting? Yeah, we're going, we're, we're going down south. Taking the dog with you? Totally. <laughs> okay, okay, sweet. Now, what happens yeah. is, I'll tell you how that works, all right? And you have the ability to do this. Everything I'm showing you, you've got. There's no difference between me and you. No difference. We're all human. In fact, some of you are probably damn sight more intuitive than I am. Okay. You know that white thing that I was mucking around with? This thing here? This is a bigger version, save your squinting. There's your spirit. <laughs> fourth dimension, right? Third dimension, fourth dimension. Inside this you have a fifth dimensional body. And that is your light body, your Holy Spirit, or your soul. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter what you call it, it's all the same thing. Okay, so whatever belief system you were, that's fine. Because that's the good stuff. The symbol for that is that. The eternal flame. Alright, and it's threefold flame. Uh, I call it the Ahika. The reason why I'm not bad on Māori is when I was in Wairo, uh, ooh, here's a pattern for you, here's a pattern. My <coughs> mum dies, so of course she's not looking good when I pop, come down the chute, so I get given to a wet nurse. Uh, and the wet nurse was Māori, full of figure, lovely curly hair, white teeth, beautiful eyes. Because I know this woman, because I've, I've recreated her all through my life. I'm actually walking my last version of her up the aisle tomorrow. She's getting married to another guy and she was my partner. And she was this woman, a duplication. Because you only ever live a duplication. Okay? So what happens is that you get the patterns out of here, which is in the fourth, and you put them in there. Which actually means you put them in your ahi car. Here. And it fries them. This is fifth dimensional. This is, this is Wi-Fi. This is dial-up, okay? <laughs> so you get this broken barking dog karma here, take it out of here and you put it in there, which is the same as putting it in there, gone. Gone. It fries it. Check the light. Good, good. So, what happens is that here's your blinking, here's all your, here's all your records. Now you've got a lot of these. Half a dozen clearing, clearing's going to scratch it, alright? We gods and goddesses, we've got shitloads of them, 540 lifetimes in the last 26,000 years. But these are limited, otherwise you would never create repeats. So that's fantastic. That's not like, oh, new shit all the time. That's where you get the same shit, different day. <laughs> because, <laughs> because your pantry is full of the same stuff. You get that? Yeah. yeah. Right, so that's a really big thing to know because when you go, if anyone wants to start clearing their stuff, this is going to get like, holy hell, how much do I have? I can, you can limit it. Always this know. This is the pantry. This is your naked chef. Right? Now, the naked chef, this is a good guy. This isn't a bad guy. 
Now, if you because if you want to create oneness on the outside of yourself, which pretty well everyone, you know, peace, harmony, good shit, the outside <laughs> is only a reflection of your inside. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you have, are you if you are picking a fight with your ego all the time, you are only going to create picking a fight with someone on the outside. Do you get that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what happens is that I need to find out how you work. I need to find out how you tick, how you talk, everything about you, because you are my naked chef in charge of my pantry, which is full of baked beans and spaghetti, and it's driving me <laughs> freaking nuts. Right. Okay. We can do this. So. He can create, or it can create, anything. This is massive, but he can only go into your pantry. Yep. He yep. can't jump out of mine, yep. into Billy's, yep. into Tanya's, Lance's, Brian's. Can't do that. Against the rules. So he can only use what's in my pantry. So then, what's cool? Right. Is that pantry the subconscious? Yeah. 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 Subconscious, yeah. Tuck. Mm -hmm. yeah. I met this bright son and taught me how to clean some of this shit. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you how it works. Here's, this, here's the pattern where I um, I had this barking dog next door to me and it's reflecting me as a little shit of a kid. Oh, okay. Spoiled? Yeah, yeah, you're spoiled. You're the youngest. You're the youngest. Come here, come here, come here. Come here. So then I want, to, I want to clear this. So you take it out of here and shove it in there. Gone. Now if any of you have anything to do with clearing ghost or anything you want to do it, you never ever leave a void. So mm. then I go, what the hell do I put in here? And what you put in there is you go copy, paste. Copy. Nice. Mm -hmm. nice. No, say that again. Okay. Fourth dimensional program, right? Yeah. Which is creating chaos in my reality. Pain in the neck. Right? But probably go to the so I clear it, putting it from here into there. Now when I was in Eurasia, one of the trendy things were, you write down all your baggage, light a fire, and you put it in the fire. So, you know, but it was close. It was the wrong direction. We have to get that list and put it into our holy fire. And it works. Because we work from the inside out. Mm. <laughs> I have a certain amount of time going, so it's okay. <laughs> so, anyway, so we've cleared that pattern, right? I need to fill the void. Now, I want to fill this stuff with some good stuff. I want to fill this with the best stuff I can, I can come up with. So, I fill it with my soul. Right? Which is fifth dimensional. Yeah. And it stays there. So when this goes, okay, time to cook up the barking dog, it'll cook up whatever that stands for. And that stands for peace, harmony, and prosperity. Right. The good stuff. That's all. You know, franchises have built their whole belief system on this. You can't have this unless you come to my house or my church or my whatever. We all have it. We all have it. If you never had this, you would be cold pushing up daisies. It's as easy as that. We all have an ahika or a sacred flame. So what happens is that next minute I've got that shoved in there and I forget about it. I don't have to do press ups. I've just cleared out the information. Pack them out of my matrix and I get on with life. So, next minute, and what happens is this is perfection, right? I didn't know the next door neighbour's favourite job was whatever it was in the South Island. That, that, that's out of my perception. This new goes, you will have the perfect outcome from this, Mr. Mika. And next minute, they were so happy. They've been trying to get this job, nothing fell into place. Next minute, dog's gone, yahoo. And it happens all the time. Time. That's, and that's what I basically do. I'm walking around on this planet, you know, I'm in here, human being. If I go out there and find someone's picked in my right hand side headlight, 
It's a bit unrude to me.